What's up YouTube, it's Kalsoscope Let's Go back with another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a basic technique that's gonna definitely take you far, and that is masking. Now, masking is a thing that, obviously you need to know how to do that in Photoshop because you can't get anywhere without it. Literally, every design that you're gonna make is gonna involve masking, and there's a couple different ways to do masking. Um, I have my favorite way, pen tool, pen tool. But there's other ways that you can use and implement on your designs uh, to make your work just go faster and just make it more neat. All right, so one of the first ways that I learned when I was just coming about was the lasso tool. And for some reason, the lasso tool was like, I liked it a lot. And you literally have to just control it by your hand and sliding on the mouse like that, right? It's shortcut L. The lasso tool is good for little areas. If you like, say if you miss a little area, you can just fill it in because it's straight from your hand and you can just uh, draw in where you want to mask. And the lasso tool all also includes polygonal lasso tool, which is uh, also, it's all in the L for the shortcut, the lasso tool. The polygonal lasso tool really makes just like sharp edges, sharp shapes. Like you cannot really change the trajectory of it that much. It's kind of more just a, a direct like selection. It's a just direct, it's gonna be in polygons. That's really what it is. And then the last thing that you can use on the magnetic lasso tool, or the lasso tool is the magnetic lasso tool. Now the magnetic lasso tool works pretty well. And you see those tabs up at the top, you can get your width, contrast, your frequency. These are all different types of things. Like the frequency is gonna be where it's gonna select the point. So the higher the frequency, it's gonna select points at a higher rate. So, so say if I, I put this up to like 100, the frequency is gonna select at a higher rate. See that? And the thing about the polygonal lasso tool is it's really good uh, to use at first, but I mean, sometimes it does get a little bit off track. And like, if you're doing hair selections like that, you're gonna kind of just run over a lot of the hair that you might have wanted to select or it might go inside of the mask. So I don't really use magnetic lasso tool uh, anymore. I used to use it in the beginning, but I don't use it anymore. Um, now our second tab is the W tab, shortcut W. This includes the magic wand, quick selection and object selection tool, okay? And the magic wand tool is, it's decent for some things. Like if you wanted to select a big like area that doesn't have a lot of like uh, differences in colors and data, cause that's really all what Photoshop is. You're selecting data. It's not saying, oh, this is actually a basketball hoop. Let me select the basketball hoop. It's gonna select similar data that seems like right to select. So if I click on that, see like it'll select similar data points. See how that's all light. Uh, it just selects similar data points. So it's kind of tough to use sometimes. If you're using like basic shapes on your designs and you're not uh, using like, say you're not using real life um, examples with a lot of shades and all that stuff, the Magic Wand tool is actually a really good source to use, say if you're just selecting some shapes. Um, quick Selection Tool is also something I used at the beginning. And Quick Selection Tool is pretty smart. You have these tabs up here, you have the minus tab which is, oh, wait, minus is on the right. So if I, this is the plus tab, we'll start on there, we'll start there. So the plus tab, you can just select a bunch of different areas. Control Z, always remember that's to undo. And then Control Alt, wait, Control Shift Alt Z is to uh, redo. So once you understand that, Control Z is to undo and then Control Shift Alt Z is to redo your selections. But if you really wanted to uh, just get onto a different tab, you could go to the minus tab up here and it's gonna select from your selections. So the quick selection tool is, is fairly good to use, but you know, like see how like when you go over, it just kind of makes excess areas if you're not really careful. That's one thing that I just kind of didn't like about it. Like I, w I didn't feel secure using it because I, I felt like at the end I would have a lot of frail spots when I was done. Like in between fingers, it's not very good for that. And just a lot of spots I felt like I didn't really like to use on it. So it wasn't my favorite to use. It might be something that you wanna get into. It's up to you. But it just wasn't my favorite, okay? And then something that's not on the tools panel, which I started using a lot, cause you guys in the streams are always telling me to start using the su subject selection. So 
<clears throat> if you have Adobe Photoshop 2020, this will definitely be in your arsenal. If not, and you have a different version, I can't guarantee that it's gonna be there for you, but what you have to do only on this is just go to select, and then you're gonna press subject right here. And then Photoshop does its best job to just select in a, su a subject that seems relatively good to its data points that it sees. So sometimes it's better than other times. Like see how the background's really blurred out in this photo? That makes it for the select subject to work very well in terms of this. And um, obviously this doesn't get everything perfect. So you can go in with any of those those things on the tools tabs to get rid of to get rid of uh, any of the points that you don't want or just add simply in some of the points. So it did a very good job. Um, just literally one click of a button and you're already there. And then you just have to get your points that you want to mask out by yourself. Like, and it doesn't take too long to do that. But you gotta just make sure you have a good photo for that. And if it's not working, just don't use it. You don't need to stress. And then the last thing that I'm gonna bring about in this video is the pen tool. Now the pen tool is dear to my heart. You know, I've done so many edits with the pen tool. And now what I actually like to do is use my select subject, select my subject, right? And whatever I don't use with my select subject, I will go in with the pen tool. The pen tool is literally, the pen tool is literally this. And so the pen tool is great because you can pick points, you can pick your own points, but they don't have to be so rigid like the polygon tool. See like how the polygon tool is like that, how it just makes points so so rigid and structured and it can't really move that much the pen tool can really move and it can you can really get some great great selections it takes more time to do but if you really hone in on the pen tool and get better with it you're going to get faster and it's just going to give you super super accurate selections because it's all it's all by your will like not not just by your will of hand because you can really select points and then move it around like Say I just needed a curve over here. I, I don't know. We're just doing random stuff right now on this. We're not doing any type of design. I'm just st showcasing these methods. You can really curve the pen tool. And the way that you curve it is you press to get your first point. And then for your second point, you're going to press down. But if you need to curve it, keep your, keep your mouse clicked down and just move the point about. Now the only the only thing that you want to be careful with when you're using the pen tool is you don't want to curve too much here and then try to just like start doing a whole bunch of like curves because you gotta you gotta you gotta make sure that when you're about to start curving a lot have have points closer to each other so that the curve kind of just goes smoothly and just doesn't go crazy. So remember that when you're using the pen tool, okay? And the thing with the pen tool is. When you are making a selection, a lot of people get confused about this, so we'll, we'll make a couple of just little selections on the arm, why not? So I'm just gonna make this selection right here. When you're done, connect it back to the first point that you made, boom. Then you're gonna right click, right? Right click, and you're gonna press on make selection, and you're gonna press new selection. You can use feathers, but if you're just going for a straight selection, don't use feathering. Feathering is pretty much like blending out, so you just wanna blend things out but we don't need to do that so you just right click and you make your new selection right and to add a new selection onto the pen tool that you already had used you're going to just make your new selection connect that point right click once again go to make selection and make sure you go down to add to selection and say if you wanted to subtract from a selection you go to subtract from the selection intersects with, with selection I don't really use that it's kind of confusing so just don't confuse yourself unless you really know what that's about. If I don't know what it's about, I'm not going to sit here and act like I know what it's about. So I don't really use that. So that's the add to so, so selection. If you want to subtract, right click, subtract it from selection. Simply like that. And the one thing about pen tool, when you use it, make sure you uh, have it on shape or path. Because if you have it on shape, it's actually going to make shapes from your, from your color panel that you have. And that's not what you're going to want to do if you're just trying to make selections. So make sure you put it on path and have this on combined shapes. I had actually got stuck up with stuck with this a couple weeks ago when I was doing a design. And I was like, why is it my pencil acting up? You got to have combined shapes on so that it knows when you're making a new selection, man. So that's pretty much all that you need to do when you are masking. You have all these options. You have L, the shortcut for the lasso tool, and you have those three options in it. You have the quick selection tool, 
Um, object selection tool is okay, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't really, I don't really believe in it too much, man. I don't believe in the object selection tool, but you have your L shortcut, your W shortcut. Then we went over the select subject and we went over the pen tool. So those are the things that you can use to mask out. These are a lot of like, uh, just variations of the pen tool and you can use them if you want, but the pen tool will never go, never have you have anything go wrong for you as long as you take your time and mask things out. So the last thing that I'm gonna do is just make a clean selection just to show you guys um, how I would how I would select something in, in very fast time. So you will see me in the future and I'm gonna speed this up and you're gonna see my process real quick. All right, so at this point I have everything masked out. If you wanna check your mask before you really uh, get set into it, you can just press Q, and that's gonna give you just a quick preview of what you're gonna have. So I like that right there. And you know, as you as you do your own type of masking and everything, you're just gonna pick up your own style and what you like best, just like in art, you pick up your own style So and what you like to do. So you're gonna be able to do that in masking. So you're just gonna hit that layer mask icon, it's the rectangle with the circle in the middle middle <laughs> and then um there's your mask and as for the background you just want to make a duplicate copy so just control j on your layer and then i'm just going to delete the layer mask to have that underneath copy but the last thing that you're going to want to do especially if you have hair in your in your mask is double click on your layer and go with the feather brush tool and i keep all of this just kind of on zero keep my opacity on about 75 and my views usually on overlay um, some people like onion skin, some people like marching ants, I don't know. But I like to keep mine on overlay so I can really just see that background. And you're just going to go on with your finding edge tool, which is R in the layer mask uh, section. And I just brush over it pretty lightly. Just light, light enough where I'm getting a disparity between the hair. Um, sometimes I go very precisely, but for, ter for tutorial purposes, I'll just do that and then decam decontaminate colors it really I don't really see that big of a difference but I usually go around 78 and there you go man so there is our mask right there I'm just gonna put a black background on the bottom just so we can see oops, so we can see the difference right so yeah man if you want to refine your mask after this I mean go ahead and do that you can press alt and just really see your mask. So if you wanted to get into the hair sections, you would press Alt on it, Alt, and then click on the layer mask. And then to get rid of some of the extra hair, you go to your brush, which is shortcut B, drop down from normal mode to overlay. And I would drop my flow down, down to there, something like that. And then you can just, you can do a lot of different things on this panel, but yeah, man, that's pretty much how you're gonna get your layer mask and that's how you're gonna mask the four simple techniques to do masking you're gonna be able to master this in like a day or two if you just practice and you're gonna get better with all the masking tools as you just practice that's that's really what it all comes down to guys so hope this tutorial really helped you guys out a lot i'm gonna start doing more of like just like breakdowns of tutorials just because i know there's a lot of people that get confused on things so this is one of the things that was brought about to me. So I appreciate you guys always telling me what you want to learn, what you want to see from the channel. Make sure you continue to do that in the comment section below. Drop a like on the video if it helped. And make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, man. Until next time, it's been Council Scope. Stay scope, y'all. Peace.